to Disney Odd Pod. I'm Kat. I'm Dee. And this week, in a world where Dad doesn't exist, it's Smith. From 1969. Smith! 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 Where you been for three days, Smith? Ma's fit to be tied! I've been up on the higher range tracking down this scrawny beef. Ma been inquiring about me? Inquiring? She says when she gets her hands on you. She's been inquiring. Three days he's gone, she says. And the two of us here all alone. Now what's for supper? We could all be murdered in our beds for all your father cares, she said. We got chicken stew for supper. Now wait a minute, what's this about who being murdered in whose bed? I don't know, but she's been walking around the house with your shotgun like there's going to be a massacre or something. Well, sometimes your ma gets carried away by the pioneer spirit. Huh. Yeah, that is the most bizarre thing about this movie, is that his kid calls him Smith. Is it his kid? Maybe. It is his kid, yeah. he. he they don't yes. look related at all. Doesn't matter. It's not his literal kid. That's what I'm saying. But it's his kid, yeah. No, what it really is, is it's when she's all pretending she's upset that he goes on these trips. Yeah. She really has a friend that comes in and sees her. <laughs> And it's that, and that's why the kids, you're not my dad, you're Smith. It's actually the cop, and that's why he hates him? Yeah, exactly. You you got it, exactly. You mean he looks more like the chicken lawyer, but... Oh, that is true. That is huge. I don't even really know what to think about this movie, to be honest. I think it's... I I actually really liked it. Of course you did. You really liked Scandalous John, too, and this is like... And those Callahans. It, those Callaways. Or Callaways, yeah. yeah. I like those Callaways, but this is not anything close I, to those I thought Callaways. it had very much Callaway vibes. Well, obviously, because, spoiler, it has the same writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But... But I was thinking that while we were watching it. I, was, I, was, I just... I was I, into it. It was funny as hell was, throughout a large portion of it. There was some horrible racism. Correct, sir. Mildly funny in parts of it. <laughs> mildly funny in parts. And the serious parts were pretty good. I'm just going to say it now. You might have to, when we get to the end of the movie, kind of explain to me. I don't understand the testimony, how that translated to self defense. Oh, but I'm, it's I'm easy. Seri- no, I'm okay, serious. Okay, I, okay, I, fine, I don't fine, understand fine, it. Fine, so fine, fine. you're going to have to explain it to me. Yeah. I was a little confused. I have no idea what's going on. Let me read this synopsis really quick. Snaps. Well, it'll be Amazon, so it's going to be one sentence. Uh, Yeah. It's not on Disney+. Plus. Shocker. Probably because of all the horrible racism. Smith. From 1969. Drama. Western. An Indian boy flees when he is accused of murder. When the synopsis is short, I like to look at uh, the reviews. And there's just one I want to share. Okay. So just for the record, this movie costs $3.99. $3.99 to rent. This review says, I paid a lot for actually I thought might be a really good anyway, but it was very poorly and amateurish. Just that, like that review. That's exactly how it was written. And I, <laughs> you paid a lot, a whole three ninety nine. dollars And it's not, it's not a bad movie. It's no, not amateurish. It, it's not bad. It's just, I, I just was kind of bored. I, part I thought of it. the acting was really good. Well, so that, I did think that the acting for the most part was pretty good. Didn't really care for... One of the characters in particular, but... I think we both don't care for one of the characters in particular. Which one? His wife? No, I like his wife. (laughs) His wife is hilarious. I don't like his wife. I think that she's kind of a Karen. Let me speak to your manager. She's she's like an old Western Karen. I thought she was going to be that in the beginning, because she kind of tried to be like that, but she totally redeemed herself the rest of the movie. Maybe mildly, but Uh, she's kind of a Karen. Well, you're going to be meeting her again in Pollyanna and the Absent-Minded Professor, so... Yeah, uh, I know, and probably other things. So her name is Nancy Olsen. Yeah. Yeah, so she's been in a couple Disney movies. Uh, I thought she definitely redeemed herself throughout the movie. Because I do agree, the first couple scenes with her, she's (sighs) awful. Oh my god. And I was like, oh no, I'm going to hate this. And then, no, no, she's fine. She's fine. I don't know. I was not a fan. Um, I'm a real big fan of Albie. Oh, the kid? Yeah. Oh. (laughs) He's hilarious. He, He kind of just looks like one of those like creepy blonde kids where their eyes are like really blue and their mouth never closes all the way. I I don't know. He doesn't look right. Our director, Michael Oh, Her- 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 He basically just did a ton 
of TV movies. A ton of TV and TV movies. I mean, it's unbelievable how many movies this guy did. And how many TV shows. Well... <laughs> Exhausting. And he had two, because when I scroll through, you can see on the pictures, it'll say, like, Walt Disney's at the top. So, I don't know if these are TV movies or if they're even on our list, but one of them, what, or two of them that were Disney, says, the one, the only genuine original family band. So, I don't know if that's, like... I feel like that's on the a list. A take on Oliver and the Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day, or Alexander, <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. Um, and the other one was The Fighting Prince of Connick. Donegal. I bet that's one of them. That was, they was are both, he directed those also, so we might be hearing from him again. Well, and then, so our writer, Louis Pelletier, as we alluded to, has also done some more Disney movies. Run, Cougar, Run, Those Callaways. Follow Me, Boys. Horse in the Gray Flannel Suit. I was surprised about the Those Callaways thing, even though it does have a similar... It's very Callaways. Yeah, but Callaways is so much better. Yeah, but that's... because the lady is so much better, in my opinion. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I just like that the, 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 the fact that this was a modern Western. I just thought that was cool. What do you mean by modern Western? Well, it took place in 1969. Like, it's modern Western. Oh, okay, gotcha. I didn't know. Okay, makes yeah, sense. Because yeah. I haven't really seen a lot of Westerns, because I'm generally not really a fan. Right, sure, sure. But... And then Chief Dan George, who was Antoine, who I also thought was great... I thought he was in more stuff. Yeah, I know. He's really recognizable. But he hasn't actually been in that much stuff. Only like 40 or so movies. No, only 40. Well, no, but most people that are really, really prolific, they're in 200 movies or something. When I was looking through the list of movies he was in, there's this movie called Little Big Man that has uh, Dustin Hoffman when he's young. Hmm. That a little, he's like a little cowboy. I kind of want to watch. Maybe we should. <laughs> we'll see him again in The Bears and I, though. Oh, okay, there we go. And then Christopher Shea, who played Albie, he's Linus on all of the uh, Charlie Brown cartoons. Oh, that actually makes a ton of sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he did that. a bunch of TV for like two years and pretty much nothing else. Well, our main guy, Glenn Ford, I mean, he was a very... Oh, we skipped Glenn Ford. That's yeah. hilarious. Because he was... See, that's part of the reason I like this movie. He was fan fucking tastic throughout the whole film. I loved everything he did. So he was really good. I will admit that. He was really, really good. And he was just like a sober Brian Keith and really, scandalous John. Really, he really was. It's a very similar story. It really yeah, is. Yeah, and, and, and just a. He just had a really good vibe about him. I know. And I can't trust you to even finish the mowing. That's right, because I'm irresponsible. You are! That's right. You. You get into fights, you yeah. run off. Right, right. He's just an old, you know. He's like a real man. Uh, now you're a man! A man, 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 now you're a man! Yeah, he's, yeah. he's a real man. Yeah, as opposed to all the fake ones out there. Well, he's not like a moon, poof, macho, bitch boy man. He, no, like, he, he doesn't have to say that he's manly. He right. just kind of exudes exactly, the manliness. Exactly, That's what I'm saying. A ton of 60s and 70s movies, not many of which that I've actually seen. But yeah, I haven't seen... Uh, the only one movie I've seen of his was Superman, where he's Clark Kent's dad. Uh, um, but it, he apparently is legendary, because I was clicking through all of his old movies... And he's the first or second person listed in every single one of them. Oh, yeah. And I've heard his name before. Yeah, I mean, that guy's a fucking legend, whatever he is. I mean... And this movie, it did have, I mean, a lot of people in it, actually. Like, even down to the small part, the prosecutor was um, John Randolph. And I immediately recognized him as Clark's dad from Christmas Vacation. Oh. So the, yeah, the, the okay. prosecutor in the, in the yeah, trial. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I was like, oh, that looks like that guy. I was right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, that's enough of those people. <laughs> I, see, the person I thought you weren't going to like was that Walter Charlie guy. Was he the sheriff? No, he was the, um, oh, the yeah. interpreter, the guy in the car. Ugh, yeah, I, I hated him. I, I hated really him didn't so like that guy. Much. He was annoying. And just, I, it was nice to see him get dunked on. That's all I know. Yeah, but I mean, he nothing really that bad happened to him. Like, he no. didn't really get anything. No. Neither did the sheriff. Nothing bad happened. Well, nothing bad ever happens to that guy in real life, so <sighs> just um, what do you want? I, I, I found it realistic in that way. I just found it funny that Jimmy Boy, who I couldn't figure out, I was like, that guy does not look Native American. No, not. he's Colombian. That's why. Yeah, no, I think the only actual Native American was Chief Dan George. No. Well, the, the other people were like oh, the, the, all those side characters. Yeah, like the guy I don't remember his name, but the guy who rode up on the little 
moped thing. Young Alexander. Was Young his Alexander. Name. <laughs> See, everybody has two names. I'm like, I don't except remember. Except for Smith. <laughs> except for Smith. <laughs> Literally, everybody has two names, pretty yeah, much, except yeah. for Smith. They're just like Smith. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I couldn't really find a lot of fun facts. I found one. I found one also. It's the same one. It Is has it? To be. Yeah. Go well, you go it. ahead. Okay. The, it's Melanie Griffith's first movie. Actually, I wrote down a different one, oh. but, you know, I didn't write that down because she was literally just an extra. Yeah, I know. But she wasn't, like, it's like, oh, Melanie Griffith was It's in probably this. the most famous thing this movie is for because there's nothing about this movie anywhere. No, there's literally nothing. It, it basically doesn't exist. All that I got was George Murdoch played, it, played an uncredited role as Eddie, who was the guy handling the bloodhounds. But I don't know who George Murdoch I didn't is. look him up either, so I don't know. Yeah, so but, that wasn't that I mean, fun. it's not. It, Although that guy was funny the way he was okay, sweating it so out. The funny part about that was there was a scene where they were above him, them, like kind of far away, and the dogs were just dragging him. Yeah, and he was falling yeah. and getting drugged. Yeah, that was yeah. really funny. It, there was some funny parts of this movie, but there was just too many kind of boring parts that right. I it didn't do it for me. I found a lot of it to be funny, whether it was intentional or not. Yeah. Let's jump in. We're not going to get deep into details, because there are so many details no. in this movie. Oh, sorry. That honestly, I could talk about it for an hour or two, it, just because I, I find a lot of it very interesting. So... Just point out the things that you found the most interesting. The most interesting. I'll point them out as we go along. But first, we just have to talk about this whack Simon and Garfunkel intro. The weird, odd, folksy, hippie intro. It sounded like Simon and Garfunkel. Well, yeah, like kind of a shitty Simon and Garfunkel. It's called The Ballad of Smith and Gabriel John Boy. Yeah. Or Jimmy Boy, yeah. Yeah, and it was kind of... I feel like all of these old 60s and 70s Disney movies have the same type of intro, because it was very Parent Trap-esque. Yeah, well, I really like... And I know they can't do it now because people would just take out their phones in the movie theater and start looking at them. I really like the credits running first and having a song so, getting you into the spirit of the movie. Yeah. I really enjoy that. Well, I yeah. wish they would do it more often. It's like where you go to... Uh, I feel like a lot of Pixar films do that. They do. Yeah. And it's like where you go to a, um, a musical and they play the music at the beginning. Right. Because it's, you're supposed to recognize musical cues for later in the show. And it's kind of that it set up the premise a little bit because they kind of explained what was going on in the song. Yeah, they so. did. They did. Which was cool. I, I I appreciated their efforts, even though the song was terrible. So, the movie opens with a little doughboy here trying to train this horse. Well, he's just kind of cheering it on, but whatever. Yeah, it's Tasha, but it's a boy horse. The beginning is very slow and yes. very long. Yes. So, we just kind of establish... Smith, Albie, and you don't think it's his dad at first because he's calling him Smith. Right, it's very confusing. Smith! But then he Smith. says, like, Ma, and blah, 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 Ma, da, da, da. He's like, and, oh, you're Ma. Yeah, and it's clearly his dad. I mean, later on, he's... Son. Well, no, he says, boy, I, I, for for ten years I haven't laid a hand on you, but I sure could. <laughs> when, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and for a split second when we go in the house, I thought she was the lady that plays the mom from Wonder Years for like a hot second. She does kind of look like and that then, lady. And then she's better looking. I than saw that her lady face though. and I was like, oh no, it's yeah. not. Well, I think the mom in the Wonder Years has like really bad eye makeup. And that's part. <laughs> that's part of why she looks the way she does. I think she's just too skinny. This is where we find out that Nora, because even Albie is talking as they're going in the house. Oh. Mom's been scared that we're going to get murdered in our sleep. And he's just like, oh my, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, <laughs> she's scared of the brown boy with a gun on the other side oh of the thing. Gosh. And she's like, I'm tired of Indians and all this stuff. I I let her, I gave her a little bit of a chance. After I this. just. But she did have a pretty Karen, Karen-esque uh, well, rant. I, it was so Karen at yeah, the beginning. Like, yeah. I was literally, Nora's kind of a Karen. Let me speak to your manager. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, and she really was. And it was... But I argue that that's the only time the rest of the movie that I think she's great. She gets a slight bump later in the movie. Because <laughs> then old uh, Antoine comes over... And yeah. he's insulting her cooking. But he's and just fucking with her. He's her best friend. He's a lifelong I, friend. I and know. he's just fucking with but her. But he was doing that, and she said something else. I don't even remember what it was, where I was like, wow. Well, no, she came right out and said, hey, what is up with the Jimmy Boy murder guy staying in our shack? And, you know, that's a valid point. 
Yeah. They are harboring a fucking fugitive on their property. She's not wrong, but no. she's just a little abrasive about it. She's very abrasive. Because she says, <laughs> I'm like, damn, Nora. Because she says, I'm so fed up with Indians. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and this movie also had a lot of strange verbiage. and Toots a lot. Tots a lot. <laughs> yes, that's what the fuck is tots a lot. It was I don't like know. A gr- we, we should have looked it up. It was, Look it up okay, now. Hold yeah. on. <laughs> well, it's a character in World of Warcraft, but I don't think that's what uh, they're talking about um <laughs> you know you know what i did enjoy though is the uh hello's place yeah it's not coming up as anything so okay. it's just like some greeting that because they say it hello and goodbye it's yeah, like Wingapo or something um but yeah they say tots a lot and then hello this place which i do enjoy hello this place which is ju- just like oh i said that now i can come in your house like, yeah, I mean, Native American culture is very different than Anglo-Saxon American white. Yeah, I know. But I was like, when they said tots a lot, I was like, what kind of fucked up lingo is this? Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. is going on here? And then, so as, so she basically sends Smith to say, hey, Antoine, get the dude off our property. Get him out of here. Mm-hmm. And as Smith is walking over there to do so, he runs across the cops who are about to come on his property, and we meet basically the biggest douche in the universe, and which I kind of like about this movie, has a great villain, you gotta have to turn Harry off. We meet the the racist, horrid cop and his ugly dogs. I love his dog. The, the bloodhounds are funny. They were but. they were just funny because it was the most, if you think about a cop with a dog, it was just very stereotypical. Yeah, old school stereotypical yeah. bloodhounds. Oh no, we don't need, I don't need no warrant to come on your property because this is an Indian, he's a killer. Blah, oh blah, my blah, god, blah. it was so and racist. Smith, and Smith is just, you know what, fuck you dude, you can't come on here without a warrant or you're going to get fired, so... It's your choice. Go get a warrant. Yeah, he's like, how do you know that he killed this guy? So, well, he's yeah. an Indian, and it's just, it was so racist. He's but an Indian, and he was drunk. Yeah. It's, it's just like, fuck off, Oh, my off, God. Dude. And, um, and, yeah, I mean, but I, I do like having a, a good villain to root against, yeah, and that's, he is awful. Because that's the thing, is that the movie says a lot of horrible racist things, but it's not coming from the good guy. No, 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 no. It's coming no, from no, no, the no, bad no. guys. And really, this is one of the better anti-racist movies because of how... It's very progressive for 1969. It, I will agree. Yeah. He gets to the thing, gate, Jimmy Boy is all freaked out. And ha- holds the gun on him, and, and Smith is just cool and calm, and old Antoine is talking already about the uh, Chief Joseph 90 years ago, and... Jimmy Boy wants to go to Canada, but Smith is like, uh, No, you gotta turn yourself in. You gotta turn in. yourself in. And then um, Antoine, who is smart, says, Oh, maybe I could turn you in and get that $500, and I could hire you a really good lawyer. Right. And Smith's like, Oh, the Bureau will get you a lawyer, and he's like... I don't fucking trust the Bureau, which is probably true. They don't give a shit about them, even though they're supposed to. Because it's not like they're run by Indians or run by whiteies. And they had no subtitles, again. Well, I kind of liked that with this, but... Not eh. when Jimmy Boy and Antoine are speaking to each other. Smith's not talking to them at all. They're just talking back and forth to each other. That's what was annoying. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't as annoyed for this one. I wasn't. But then Nora rides up, and he's like, oh, uh, oh, Gabriel's freaking out again. Smith leaves, and he's mad at her because he could have got him killed. Kind of an idiot. Yeah. So, you know. And she's like, I thought you were dead in a pool of your own blood, blah, 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 blah. Which, also, sensible. I guess, because she, this all she knows is that he's, a mur- he's supposedly a murderer. Yeah, and he's been gone three hours, and he probably should have been gone for one. Right. So, I mean... I don't know. She's just annoying. I don't like <laughs> not a fan of Nora. Um, the next day, Smith is like doing chores. Oh, no, no, no. The boys. Yeah, first. no, this is, yeah, this is where <sighs> the boys. Is it Peter Paul? Is that his friend? Yeah, his Native American friend. Yeah, Peter Paul. Yeah. yeah. So, so Albie and Peter Paul are screwing around, peeking into the shack, and they don't see anything, and they get a little scared, and they run away, they go to this mine, and then they actually find Jimmy Boy. Yeah, and he's pointing a gun at them. Yeah, and I'm like, dude, they're little kids, don't do that. Yeah, Jimmy Boy is kind of a little bit crazy. Well, he did just kill a guy. 
Yeah. In self-defense, but he killed the guy. Supposedly. They he's d- just scared, really. Yeah, he's yeah. really scared, because he knows that, oh, I'm I'm an Indian, so they're just going to kill me. I'm going to dying on the rope, yeah. They're going to kill me. They are, oh, we'll bring you food. Yeah, Albie is, like, the best person on Earth. Yeah, he just... He's, you're a nice guy, I can tell you're nice. You definitely didn't do anything wrong. I'm going to bring you food. We'll do a little whistle. Yeah. And do a little whistle. Do a little whistle. <laughs> You'll know it's us. And then we first meet, what's his face? The smarmy guy. Uh, yeah. Uh, what's his name again? It's, um... Yeah, it's Walter Charlie. Yeah, it is. It yeah, is. Walter Charlie. He's... Uh, and he's, like, trying to... Bargain with... Con- yeah, trying to convince Smith to turn in Jimmy Gabriel and split the money with him, but he wants to keep 350 of the dollars and give him 150 Get the fuck out of here, dude. He's just a really bad guy. Like, yeah. he's not... Like, he's the he's lowest a, of a the low. He's a shyster, low-level... Oh, I'm gonna be the interpreter again, and who knows what he's doing to those poor guys' interpretations in court. Right. He's just a horrible person. Oh, and then when Smith tells Nora about the cash, she she wants that cash. She She's like, like lights cash? lights up at that cash. And that was only hundred and fifty of the dollars, not five hundred. Right. And But they do need it, but you know They you mean know. yeah, that aspect is similar to, to Callaway's. Like yeah. they are they need the money. The poor, yeah. Yeah. Um but so then Smith is out working again, and yeah, him and him and Albie are working on a bridge on their property, and they see the sheriff cop guy with the dogs again, and they're running with the dogs at this point, yeah. and they're running up to the cabin, to the shack, yeah, and they come back, and then uh, Smith kind of doesn't know that he's just fucking with them. Yeah, he's oh, yeah. he's up in the mine, and then Albie's like, um, actually, he really is up in the mine. Yeah, after the cops leave, he's like, Dad. They are, or he is in the copper mine. Not dad. Never dad. Smith. 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 Smith yeah. <laughs> you know, he just must not have liked to be called dad. I, 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 I'm actually okay with that. I wish more guys would occasionally do this. You know what I, I mean? It's weird. Um, oh, I so. It's weird. With the dogs. Do you notice they use the same dog sound effect in like all of these old oh, movies? Yeah. This is the same one that they used in Fox and the Hound. By the way, uh, that the, makes the sense. dogs yeah. barking the yeah. I can't. I'll have to show it to you later. But it's... but here's here was my thought as they're coming up the mountain with the copper mine. The dogs are so fucking loud. You would have all of the time in the world to just get away, which is right. You know. So I honestly thought he was going to be in the mine still, but he's and, like, like pet the dog, and do his Native American magic to get <laughs> the dogs to go away. Ooh, racist. No, no that, that's that was the whole thing because the whole thing with this was that Antoine was going to break the horse because he had to speak to the horse or whatever. That right. was so that's why right. I thought that right. was going to be a thing. I also thought that was going to be a thing, but, but it I, just turns out he wasn't there because as the cops move on and the dogs actually find him because they lead him back to the sheriff's office because guess what? Antoine turned him in for the $500. This was actually funny. When the dogs yeah. are running back to the sheriff's office, that was funny. That was funny. And well, and the sheriff just being annoyed at the stupid cop was funny too. He's like, just fuck off, dude. Do what I told you and get out of here. Because <laughs> he keeps, the sheriff, the... The cop really just wants to kill yeah, the guy. he pulls out his gun every chance he can get. Yeah, he pulls he's out like, his hey, gun. I'm going to see my gun. <laughs> it's see long my and, gun? It's long and skinny. Yeah. Um. Whoa. After Smith visits um, Jimmy boy in jail. Yeah. He's stopped thinking about that rope. Vince pulls out his gun again. Yeah, he does. He's at Smith. And he's going to shoot Smith because Smith is talking shit about him being on the take from the guy that got murdered. He's like, why didn't you stop that guy? Why didn't you stop him from illegal gambling and selling illegal alcohol? Oh, was it because you're getting a little cut on the side? Ooh. And see, that's what I'm talking about. That was a good part of this movie. That was awesome. Yeah. He's just dunking on the cop. Then Walter Charlie, the cheapskate asshole conned Antoine out of all of his money. I don't even think it's a con. I honestly think that that's what Antoine wanted to do. Because he's talking and, like, touching the car. No, it's all good. This is fun. This is cool. I don't know. He's an old man. He might have got confused. No, like, I, I, I disagree. I disagree. I, I think he was telling in that, because there was no translation, but I think he was telling Smith that he was all good with it. He wanted the car. He wanted to get driven around. Ugh. Because there's a weird car chase, like, chicken scene where they're riding around. Well, the car has no brakes, really. Right. Yeah. It's just horrible. So, yeah, that's the next scene, is that Smith is driving home, and 
uh, Walter Charlie and Antoine come up and kind of like come up to pass him, but they're just like talking and hanging out and another car is coming and they, everybody runs off the road and Walter Charlie recklessly just wrecks the car into a pondish thing. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> It's just funny. It's so stupid. Because they didn't even bother to wipe the four ninety nine ninety five no, paint off the windshield. The, it you can't like, even see. No, he's an idiot. He's yeah. like, oh, it seems you're like you're a really bad driver, Smith. And I'm really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, that's all your fault, Smith. Yeah, Walter Charlie is the worst. Well, you're back at the, the ranch. And first we think that all these Native Americans are coming to cut the hay. No, they're just coming to be like, bye, Smith. We're going to the trial. Well, they're saying, hey, we'll be back. But we got to do the trial first, which, eh, eh, you know, they're not super capitalists. No. Um, and... Which, which Nora had alluded to in her, in her Karen, uh, racist rant. Yeah. She was, if they want to cut the hay. But, the, you know, they have priorities. They're not... Well, they're, uh, like... It's not just money. Our them. family is most important. Yeah, yeah. Um... Our culture. And we have a scene with, um... Smith and Nora and the hay, where he's just sweet talking her into forgetting about being mad about the hay. Yeah, and then they pound in the hay. Obviously, they roll in the hay. <laughs> well, it's very obvious. Yeah, he's like, L- 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 "Let me get up in that bitch. Come on, because <laughs> I'm about to leave." Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> then Antoine somehow gets himself in jail, being a dumbass, and Smith has to go save the day. This is where we meet young Alexander. Right. He rides up on his uh, motorcycle with the sidecar. Yeah, is <laughs> Immediately, the second he gets off that motorcycle, uh, Albie jumps on it and then pretends <laughs> like he's riding in the background. It's so funny. Yeah. And he's just like, hello, this place. Okay, I'm going to walk in your house now. And That's all they got to do. It's so just their, that's their thing. When they're sitting there at the table, he's, and, like, pawing all of these delicious-looking buns. And then he... I thought he was going to end up taking, like, all of them. He only took one. And he took his share. No, I know, but he grabbed, like, five of them and yeah. then left the other ones on the counter. Uneaten, delicious, frosted buns. <laughs> I don't know if they're delicious. They talk shit about her stew. Maybe she I, can't cook at all. I don't know. <laughs> I think that they secretly love it. Yeah. <laughs> So, and then Nora comes, she knows that Smith is just, like, really having a hard time with all this. and Because he's worried about getting his hay done. And they're like, don't worry, Smith, it'll stay dry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but he's like, but he also knows he really needs to help Antoine and Jimmy Boy. Yeah. So she whoops out her, uh, her disaster fund. So at first when she was like... If you go, don't bother coming back. I'm like, you're a fucking cunt. And then she gives him the money. I'm like, okay, you're like half a cunt. No, she's not a cunt at all. She's got to like, she's got to get her little piece in. She's got to be like, you know, this is our family, but I also know that that's our family too. She's the best. She's okay. I don't know, but she's been walking around the house with your shotgun like there's going to be a massacre or something. She, she, she digs into her fun and gives it to him. She's just, she's a ball buster. She gives it to him with like a dig, which is what I don't She's like. a ball buster. That's good. It is good. She's, she doesn't let him off the hook. Yeah, she's like, take Albie with you so I can call my boyfriend. Yeah. Or sorry, Albie's real dad. <laughs> 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 you gotta show him the way of the world. Yeah, show him the way of the world. And really all he shows him is that he likes to fight. <laughs> I mean, really. And we meet the lawyer who is like clearly just so out of his depth. And and and, and Jimmy Boy keeps calling him a chicken. <laughs> He looks like a Ken doll. I mean, he just looks like he does not belong there. With at all. A, just just a total ball of nerves on it. Well, right. and that's what and they made that point. Is like, oh, they he, they they got a a rookie attorney. This is his first trial. Yeah, because that's probably all the Indian Bureau could like. Well, that's all, when you get a court appointed lawyer. Yeah, that's it's a rookie. You're getting somebody who's not good enough to go make hundreds and hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars as a lawyer. You're getting. There's this a little scene that I actually did like where Albie and uh, Smith, not Dad. When they're driving down the road and yeah, he doesn't and understand like, why people don't like, like Indians. why don't they like Indians? He's like, isn't Antoine your best friend? And what's Peter his... Paul's my best friend. And then he can't really think of a good answer because... Because any answer he gives is just a racist pile of horse shit. Because there is no answer. People are fucking dumb. And, he, and he's like really honest with this kid right there that... Yeah, okay, It's it doesn't make any sense. And that, you know, Jimmy Boy, even though we don't think he did it, you know, you never know. It's up to the jury. 
he this might not end up good. Right. He's very honest with him, and Albie thanks him for being honest to him. Right, because it's usually generally better to be honest with your kids. Yeah. Weird. Walter Charlie is being a dumbass in the cafe when oh, he's yeah. leaving. He knocks a bunch of coffee onto this white guy who's going to fight him. And he slithers out like an idiot. Yeah, and he's, sl- well, not an idiot. He's just a snake. That's what he does. Yeah, and the cook, like, apparently defends Walter Charlie because he, th- he's- he thinks that he thinks that Smith, who is roughing up the mechanic, was roughing up Walter Charlie. Right. So he decks him and then. Smith decks him back, and everybody's like, whoa, 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 no, he was helping Walter Charlie, dude, what the fuck, that's his friend, and and just nothing. It was just kind of like a weird throwaway scene, almost. I think it was setting up the court battle. Right, and just also having to run into Walter Charlie again, because he is oh so pleasant to hang out with. Yeah, yeah. Well, he dunks on him a little bit in there. I mean, why didn't Antoine reach out to me? Why didn't I know he was in jail? I could have helped him. Oh, but I won't put up $10 for him. Yeah, because he, he's just, he's that guy that's always, oh, I did all this, but he really didn't do anything. Yeah, he didn't do anything for him. Right. He's just a, he's just a shit bag. He, he likes to take credit when there's no credit due to him. That's right. Then there's all this drama in the courtroom about, hey, where the jury needs to get out of here because Antoine still hasn't shown up. He's like, we've got to dismiss this case, but then... Guess what, Antoine Yay, shows up. Yay, old Antoine. I literally wrote, yay, old Antoine. <laughs> he shows up, and they're like, bring the court interpreter. And I'm like, yeah, court interpreter my ass. Yeah, so <sighs> Walter Charlie's doing a shitty job of interpreting. Nobody likes it. And then Smith, he's getting mad at everybody. Like, why won't you let him tell his story? Why won't you let him do what he's doing? Yeah. Antoine asks if Smith can be his interpreter. Right. And he just completely cucks Walter Charlie in the middle of court, dunking on him, reverse style. So he does become the interpreter. Antoine tells his story, which is horrible, and bums everybody out. It's a bummer, man. That's, uh, that's a bummer. Because he's telling a story of them getting chased by the Americans and getting slaughtered by just trying to stay alive. That's self-defense. He was, like, making an okay. allegory of self-defense, like, oh, hey. I, I got that he was telling the story, but I guess I didn't really understand... The self-defense bit Well, because all they were doing is just trying to live, and they were just getting killed. Okay, that, that makes the, more sense. Because the white okay. men were just fucking them. And that's what he's saying. He's like, this guy was just running after him, chasing after him, fucking him over, and he had to act in self-defense. Like, gotcha. he had to keep himself alive. And, 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 of course, just watching that scene, you would have never understood that. That's... Exp- like mansplained to us later by the prosecutor. Uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. But <laughs> and everybody's like in almost in tears listening to the story, the whole jury. Yeah. Everybody's picking it up. Like, oh my god, I'm so ashamed. Yeah, like this is just horrible. Yeah, I I got it. And as Smith is walking out Vince is talking shit and he's yeah, like, Oh, Vince is sh- talking shit. The judge should have fucking got him for contempt of court for that. That was bullshit. Well yeah, the judge is kind of an idiot. Yeah. So then Smith and Vince are fighting, and he punches Vince in the face, and then the judge is like, bring Smith to my chambers. And and initially, he just gets a... A $10 fine. $50 oh, fine. Oh, $50, $50 fine. $50 fine. But then he's like, oh, that was worth it. Yeah. And the judge is a fucking dick. Like, oh, you don't respect my court that you thought that was worth it? You rented a little time to beat up Vince in my courtroom? It's like, no, dude, that gets being a piece of shit. Yeah, he doesn't care. He's the judge. Yeah, so the judge is like, fine, fuck it, you get 30 days in jail, no, no, uh, no way to get out of it, no fine. And, and, and and so after Smith is jailed for 30 days, the prosecutor is talking to the defense attorney about how great of a job that guy was, because the lawyer didn't even realize the self-defense thing. He's just like, yeah, you know, I know on a beat, blah, 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 that was the greatest story of self-defense I've ever heard. And the lawyer's like, oh. Because <laughs> he's like, go take me out for a meal, I'm going to teach you how to be a lawyer. Yeah, and then they're best friends forever. Yeah. Um. So they don't even show, like, Jimmy Boy getting, let, you know, acquitted or whatever. Which I was very happy about. Yeah, and they just show all of his Native American friends and family out there just having a big old party. And Albie's like, okay, I guess I gotta go now. Well, because the guy points him to take him home in Smith's truck. Right. Yeah. So then Antoine is protesting out in front of the courthouse to let Smith out. Right, and the judge is just fascinated by him being knowing Chief Joseph. Right, and then when he finds out that he can speak English, he's... Tell me your secrets. Yeah, he's, like, able to negotiate with the judge to let Smith out, and he'll talk to him in English all he wants. Right. The judge is like, yep, he's out. 
And then he goes home and he is going to plow. He's going to plow because he charms Nora immediately. Like, she tries to be mad at him at first. And then he's like, he's like already macking. Like, he is going to plow that bitch. McDonald! We're going to cut your hay. We're going to stay till the moon comes up. Get it all finished. You have supper for hungry people? Oh, you can eat the place bare. I'll get everything ready. Everybody shows up. All the Indians show up. Yeah, it was like in those Callaways when they all show up to build that house yeah, or whatever. Yeah, they show up to hay and everybody does. Even Albie gets in on the action. Yeah. And, and it's going to be a good year. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to make it, Smith, aren't we? We're going to make it this year, Smith. So that's the end of the movie. The Ballad of Smith. The Ballad of Smith and Gabriel Jimmy Boy. Yeah. What a terrible song. It it's not great. It, I mean, helped, it helped set up the movie, but it's it, terrible. It did song. the beginning part did help set up the movie because I think if you didn't have that, it actually would have been a little confusing. Yeah, because they she's like, "There's a murderer," and I'm like, "Who's a murderer? I don't yeah, understand." What, what? But because it did that, you you understood what was going on. So right, right. that actually was good. That part of it was good. It was good. So part character Smith, we've already talked in depth yeah. about how he's a real man. Yeah, he's like a John Wayne type. But a good guy. He's like, like a cousin of McCandless from Scandalous John. They I think they might be brothers. I mean they really <laughs> they they kind of look alike even. They do look like, very similar. So they're brothers and then Brian Keith in Calloway's is their cousin and it's a <laughs> it's a whole thing. They're all connected. They're they're a big family. It's the Disney movie that never was. The okay. Disney family movie. Uh, family reunion. Yeah, and Smith is a great character. Really, truly great. He's and pretty good. I did enjoy his character. Very funny. Just all throughout. Very good. And then you have Antoine, who's actually old school. Like a real native, real real deal, Holyfield. And then Nora, the sassy, the sassy wife. Karen. I just wasn't a fan. I don't know if I think it maybe it was the actress that I, I think I think your problem was just that she was introduced slightly Karenish. I don't think you thought about the justified fact. I just think it maybe I didn't like the actress that played her. Maybe that was it. Well, I don't think so because I think she was just fine and we are going to be meeting her again. Well, we'll see. That'll be the test. Yeah. Uh Albie, he's just too good for this world. He, yeah, not really Smith's kid. The it's the boyfriend's kid, you know. <laughs> but yeah, he's a he's a good little boy. Um And the Vince, who's the poster boy for problems with police oh god fuck this tool he's yeah. just yeah pulls it exactly because he pulls out his gun every chance he gets he pulls out his fucking gun yeah for no reason for literally no reason he's in the fucking police station <laughs> oh, oh, I'm, gonna, oh, oh, oh i'm, I'm in danger <laughs> and the, the guy and the and sheriff's he, like fuck off and sit down and get the fuck out of here yeah, what's wrong because with you he's literally like i've been chasing this guy for days well great he's here now so yeah. what the fuck are you gonna do <laughs> yeah. what are you gonna do yeah he's the yeah. worst he is he is the worst and then well no the, the that's not true the other guy walter charlie is a fucking chucklehead dundering <sighs> piece of shit he's also the worst he might actually be the worst because yeah. he tries to act like a good guy yeah and that he's whole just... thing where he's like antoine will realize one day what i've done for him and he yeah. hasn't done anything he only yeah. thinks about himself yeah he's a garbage person yeah it's not so, good so for cinematography it was all good it, the movie looks fantastic for where it's shot and where it's done it's a great looking movie they didn't try and do anything weird yeah, it's shot really well i thought it has that 1960s signature disney look where everyone's face looks shiny and sweaty well, all the time well, right because <laughs> they didn't know how to do stuff but no i know but if they remastered this in hd it would be fucking rad yeah, it would. it would look really. I, I think I think it was actually secretly shot really well. I, there were a lot of really, like the car parts were shot really well. Yeah, I'll agree with that. It, it wasn't it, bad. It looks it looks good, especially because a lot of times it bumps me when they're not remastered, and in this one, yeah, it was wasn't so good it didn't bump me. It wasn't bad. I didn't really come up with any quotable lines. I should have. So. Because there were some, and I just didn't write them down. And my favorite one was, sometimes sometimes Ma gets carried away by the pioneer spirit. <laughs> at the beginning when Alfie, Albie was telling him about the mom carrying the gun around the house. There was a pretty good tagline for this movie at the time was, The trouble with Smith was Indians. The trouble with Indians was not enough Smiths. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I do have one. It's uh, when he was talking to Albie in the restaurant, and he's like, the biggest trouble you can get in with is with an Indian is if you try and hurt him, and the second biggest trouble you can get in with an Indian is if you try and help him. That's after he got in a fight with the restaurant owner. Uh, 
biggest surprise. Uh, I was surprised at how well this translates. It, it, I thought it was really good for today. I was very happy with it. I was just disappointed that nothing bad really happens to what's his face um, guy. Um, the cop or Walter Charlie? Neither one. Walter Charlie and the Vince cop yeah. guy. Nothing really bad happens to either one of them, which was just kind of disappointing. It just seems real. For me, disappointing the slow pace. They needed to tighten this up a bit. It was a little slow, and that that was also my trouble with Scandalous John. Is it well, it felt kind of slow. Like right, these but old... that's just how movies were made back then. I, well, I don't know. We've for seen, the most part, we've seen other movies during this time that haven't been this slow. Sure, 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 sure. The same thing for the remake. I would just tighten it up a little bit. I wouldn't even remake it. I would just make some cuts. No, make a sequel where. <laughs> Smith goes and visits McCandless from Scandalous John, and then they go on a, a like a cowboy road trip to go shoot the shit with Mr. Calloway, and then they all have a bunch of beers, and then Mr. Cal- Mr. Calloway gets crazy because he's an alcoholic. That's not bad. Or they all come visit Smith. Like, yeah. Yeah, that'd be better if they came visit, because the other two are a little bit more losery than Smith. They would have to come visit Smith. Yeah, they come visit Smith. Just them shooting the shit, or they go on some sort of crazy adventure somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Family reunion, Smith style. <laughs> I wish I could remember the guy from Scandalous John, the other guy, his companion, what his oh, name was. Because um, he definitely deserves to be part of the party. I can't remember. Yeah, I can't remember either. It- uh, any final thoughts? No, I mean, it was, there were parts of it I liked, but I had the pace, and it was just kind of boring to me. It was just okay for me. I would say watch this movie. It's uh, Smith is so fucking charming and so cool. I mean, he's pretty good. He's pretty good. The- it's worth watching this movie just to watch Smith and Albie. Albie's awesome. Al- Albie's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, his, anytime he's on screen and speaking, it's he's just good. a little cutie. He's he's well, yeah, he's cute and he's just he's so direct and so pure that I I really feel like he he does a good job. He does. So were you able to get a budget? <laughs> no. Yeah, no, there was no, no way to find anything about this. No, movie. no budget, no money made. None of that was able to be found. So what was your rating for this movie? Um. It was just the for me, so I gave it a forty-one percent. That's still not too bad. Uh, four point one out of ten une- uneaten delicious buns left on the counter. And I, I get, I get, I get your forty-one, but I have to like balance it out. I give it a sixty-one because mm-hmm. I like it, and I think it deserves to be in that fresh category. The the good side of the ledger, it it deserves to pass. You know, it's a passing grade. It deserved to pass. I think it just kind of missed the mark a little bit. No, nah, I don't think it missed any mark. I thought it was a good movie. What do you think the Rotten Tomato score for this movie is? <sighs> Did anybody even see this movie to give it a Rotten Tomato nope. score? Nope. There's no people nope. score. Is nope. there? There's no people or critics score. Oh, it's so a how do we nil nil? It's one of those. We've had that before. We just have to throw it out. It doesn't count. Oh, yeah, because wow. it, it can't it can't be a zero because it's definitely not a zero. No. It just has what, to not count. But what is a... Uh, hold on. I'm just... Just one second before you do that. Are IMDb scores out of 10? Well, yeah, but nobody does IMDb. Who oh. cares? Every IMDb score is bad. Well, it got four stars on Amazon out of five. Yeah. So also there's that. Also meaningless. <laughs> uh, but... Although maybe it proves that if you actually watch it, you like it. Eh, yeah, maybe. I think the IMDb score was five... 5.8, which means nothing, because... It's right about in the middle of us. I mean, there you go. Yeah, but the best score on IMDb you can get is, like, 7. I thought it was 10. Yeah, but nothing's 10 on IMDb. Oh, I the, don't know. That's what I'm saying. The best score you can get... IMDb is the worst. Their rating system is garbage can awful. Uh, garbage. We got number 197. Ooh, so this is a good range. Uh, is yeah. this in the 90s, isn't it? It's sure. It's smack dab in the direct middle of the Ooh, 90s. Okay, so... This is stressful. Is it live action? Oh, yeah. Oh, you've seen it, I'm guessing. Cause no, 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 but I know it's live action. Oh, you know what it is. Uh... I only I recognize the title. Okay, about that? so I've probably seen it then because I have seen a lot of them. I just don't remember them off the top of my head. I would wait. Bet what's them. the year? Nineteen ninety five. Yeah, I would bet you've seen this. What movie. else came out in nineteen ninety five? The movie directly before this was Pocahontas, and directly <sighs> before it. that was Goofy Movie. Damn it. 
the di- movie directly after this is Kid in King Arthur's Court and The Big Green. Oh, I so I've probably seen this, but I have no idea what it is. Okay, so from 1995, number 197 is Operation Dumbo Drop. I haven't seen this, actually, but I, I think I know what it is. But yeah, it's something where they had to drop an elephant out of an airplane well, for some reason. Well, obviously, Dumbo Drop. Like, what do you, yeah, uh, like probably to repatriate it or something. Yeah, like relocate it back to its home or something. Yeah, but I yeah, feel like they were in the military or something. And they, they, well, I think they had to use a military aircraft. Yeah, there's some, it's something. It's but, like Free Willy, but with an elephant. I feel like that sounds right. Oh, Free Willy's not a Disney movie, though. It's DreamWorks, yeah. yeah. So no, it's, isn't Free Willy Warner Brothers? Well, I think that's what became yeah, DreamWorks, but yeah. But I think that's what it is, though. But no, I actually don't think I've seen this. Yeah, I might have, but I, I don't remember it. I definitely have not seen this. I violently did not see so this. So I remember see I've seen the movie poster. I remember there's seeing like the, there's like three yeah. dudes' heads, and one of them's a black guy, yeah. and there's like an elephant with a big parachute. I definitely remember, like, vaguely remember the trailers. It's going to be something ridiculous. I. It's probably going to be like a Mighty Joe Young type of like situation yeah probably somewhere between air bud and mighty joe young i would say yeah but hopefully they don't leave the elephant on an island and they're like get out of here just leave and then you see the tiger like jump on the elephant and kill it right away oh my god stop it no that's not gonna happen (laughs) it probably is maybe he flies away with a magical feather like dumbo that would be rad um so yeah um next week is uh operation dumbo drop Yay. I, I guarantee you it's going to be good because it's a 90s movie. It, it'll probably be okay. Yeah. It'll probably be all right. I don't know, um, but Mighty Joe Young was also a 90s movie, I think, wasn't it? Or was that in the 2000s? <laughs> in the meantime, <laughs> if you'd like to follow us on social media, Disney Odd Pod, Facebook and Instagram. Send us an email, DisneyOddPod at gmail.com. Yeah, at Kim. Uh, yeah, like, subscribe, follow, tell all your friends and buddies and everybody all like that. Go on the rooftop, sing a song about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just listen to us in your car and enjoy. The Ballad of Cat and D, Disney Odd Pod. Disney Odd Pod, (laughs) the Disney Odd Pod. Okay, so, for now, I'm D. I'm Cat. This has been Disney Odd Pod. Bye. Bye! After Pocahontas, is what a fucking bummer! <laughs> no, but there's Ugh. too many animals in here. Luke, come no. on. No, 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 no. There you go. Oh my god, it's like a fucking... Pause cast. This is not professional podcast behavior by all the animals. Luke found his way out. <sighs> yeah, no. Lily? Lily, Daddy's gonna have his thing here and he can't have you on his... No, especially not ah. her touching the microphone. She needs to get down. She can't handle it. Hey, get out of here. She's like, I'm going out the only way I know how. I'm going to be a big nuisance. (laughs) Okay, all right, this is probably going to be stupid, but okay. Good. Better, Better stupid than anything. Yeah. All right.